It's really important when we look at image interpretation to take a systematic approach and we'll go through an approach that goes from general to specific information. What we need to be able to do is to detect features and then also to identify that what those particular features are. And this is a manual process that we go through here, but it's also important to note that image processing systems actually now try to use the techniques that we would do in a manual system as well. So it's really important to go through this process to understand how exactly we go through the process of image interpretation and how we analyse images. So whether or not we have success in our aerial photo analysis and satellite image analysis also is based on a number of things. First of all, our, our perceptual ability, our training and background, and also the experience that we have in, in looking at these different features. It's all really, also really important to have specific discipline knowledge. So there's no point in, in having a really good background in, in marine photo analysis and then trying to work in forestry, for example. They're very different. The, the type of equipment that you have available to you is also very important. So are you using a stereoscope um, or are you, are you looking just at hard copy printouts without that? And also ancillary data. This is really, really useful in terms of having additional maps, field work reports, and your knowledge of the area also. So we have a number of image interpretation cues that are fairly standard that we use. So on the left-hand side, we look at the individual cues. Um, in the middle there, looking at the terminology that we can use for those, and an example on the right-hand side. So for example, the cue for tone or color, and we look at describing features by being either dark or dark, light, bright, and also by using the, the colour that's, that it's associated with, so whether it's blue, green, red, etc. For texture, we look at if, if things are smooth or rough, and this is really a function of looking at the, the colour variation at different scales that, that give it that impression of being smooth or rough. So the key thing with looking at these individual cues is that it's important to realise that not every feature that you are trying to describe will have every single interpretation cue associated with it. So for example, if we look at shadow, tall buildings might have, uh, might have shadow, whereas a water body might not. But also the absence of shadow is also important to note as well. One of the harder things that people find a little bit difficult to understand often is sight and association. And this is really understanding the spatial relationship between different features. So for example, you might, you might be able to figure out that a certain patch of vegetation is actually mangroves because of its location to um, salt water bodies. So when we look at creating an image interpretation key, we can look at dichotomous keys to make things really simple. So we ha this is an example here of where we start at. We look at basically saying yes or no to a particular question. And the example here is the tree crown under 10 metres in diameter or over 10 metres in diameter. And if you have a, a, an answer as a yes or no, then you can go down to the next step. Okay, so at each step you're breaking down into two. And in this example here, this will give us down to a particular fruit or nut tree. Our image analysis is also controlled by the minim minimum mapping unit that's, that's required for a particular application. So if we have a small minimum mapping unit, we're talking about high detail and a large minimum mapping unit for low detail. So for example, low detail might be land versus water, whereas if we're looking at high detail, we can get into a lot more information there, so perhaps talking even down to individual species of trees. So if we look at some classification guidelines, for example, this is from USGS. We're looking for an overall accuracy of greater than 85%. So it actually says less than there, but it should actually be greater than or equal to 85%. And it's really important to ensure that the individual class accuracies should be about equal. So you don't have one which is close on 100%, but one is all the way down at 20%. It's also really important to try and get repeatable results between different interpreters and also over time and that your, your key is applicable over extensive areas. So not just for one photo but for the next photo that you're looking at as well. 
What you need to also be able to do is to aggregate categories or to divide categories into smaller categories. You want to be able to ensure that you can compare with a future date, so looking at seasonal variations as well. And and you'd like you'd like this you'd like to be able to have multiple uses of a particular category. So an example of class aggregation is given here, where first of all, all we start at level one, having urban or built up land. Level two, we've got a large number of, of classes that that's been broken down into. Okay, so we're separating them out, but then if we want to go back up to level one, we can aggregate those also. We go down to level two, we've got that finer scale detail there as well.